Hi, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative. In my project today, I'm calling a mixed media puppies triptych because it's three artist tiles that I've connected together um, with a dog theme <laughs> and lots of other materials. So it's kind of a long video, as many mixed media videos are, because there's so many elements that are going to go into this that it takes a while to show them all to you. But hopefully you'll stick with me because it was really, really fun and pretty easy to do. So this is the Puppies Clear Stamp Set from Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's brand new, and I've stamped it with Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto a scrap piece of Nina Solar White cardstock because I'm going to be coloring them, as you see, with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. So my doghouse, I started off with CR10. That's the lightest shade. And I'm adding some shading like around the opening and around the roof line and the sign with CR8, and then I'm gonna darken that down even more with DR5, and then I will blend that out with the CR8, just by kind of coloring over it to blend it together. And then I will take the CR10 and color over that also to get a nice smooth blend on that house. And for my roof and the interior, I'm going to use IG-8. At least I'll start off, with, start off with IG-8. I was thinking that would be my darkest color, but then I changed my mind and went all IG-8 and then went to IG-10, which is even darker, to darken around the edges of the opening in the, in the house and then the roof line as well. For my golden lab, I started off with LY-1, which is an illustrator marker. Um, for the lighter portions, and I'm adding shading with GB8, um, kind of like the side of his head where he's like all wrapped together, the side of his leg, the bottom of his tail, the paw that's like um, under his ear, that kind of thing. And then I'm blending that back out with the LV, LY1, sorry, LY1. And then I'm going to add some TN2 because I just feel like the sh some of the shadows need to be a little bit darker. So I'm going back and adding some TN2, and then I will blend that out again with the GB8 to get like a nice kind of shading on this golden lab guy. And then I will blend that entire thing out again with the LY1. And I was super happy with this color combo. Um, I thought it, he really looked like a golden lab. I thought not too yellow, not too tan, just the right uh, sort of in-between shade there. And his nose is TN7 with a little shading uh, with TN8 and a tiny bit of blending with the TN7. Now my black and white dog, I am coloring his spots with IG8. The eye spot, um, I'm going to do IG6 so it's lighter because his, I didn't want to lose his eyeball in there. And I do actually go back and highlight all of the eyes on the dogs with some black glaze pen so that they stand out. Now I added a little bit of shading to the spots with IG-10 and now I'm blending back with the IG-8. And now to shade some of the white parts of his fur, I've got IG-4 for like under his belly and those paws that are behind the front ones and under his jawline. And then I will blend that out just a little bit with the IG-2. So I'm kind of going over that and just a little bit further out. And then I'll use IG-1 to blend that into the white. So I'm just kind of going over the, the edge of the shadows and blending it out into the white. And then I'll add a little bit of IG-6 to those back legs and blend that with the IG-4 just to darken them down. Now for my Chihuahua, I started off with TN2 as like the base coat. And then I will add TN7 as shadow, you know, kind of like around her legs and under her chin and around the sides of her head, and around her eyes and her nose. You'll see how much darker that TN7 is than the TN2. Well, so now I'm gonna take my TN2 and I'm touching it to the TN7 tip and then coloring just a little bit with that in between color. And this does a great job of allowing you to sort of have more of the dark shade or less of the dark shade as you need it um, while you color and get a good, nice, smooth blend in between those two original colors that were pretty far apart on the value scale. And it works out really, really well. And that's an easy way to stretch your markers if you don't have like the perfect medium shade. Sit. Now for her bow, I did base coat that with TB3 and I'm adding shading with TB6. The Le Yellow Labs collar was also colored with TB3. And the 
collar on the little black and white dog is DR7, as are the stripes on the ball. And the fire hydrant was colored the same way as the house. Now these are my artist tiles. They are Strathmore four inch by four inch artist tiles. So they're really th actually pretty thin paper and I'm going to color them with my distress crayons, but I have coated them with white gesso and I've not coated them very well. Like they're, there are spots where the gesso has not covered the square and that's purposeful because when you do that, you get like sort of darker patches as you see some of the green patches on this one, um, where the gesso hasn't covered the piece of paper. So it's going to change the way that the color reacts with the background. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to get kind of a funky textured effect on the background. So you can see I'm kind of going nuts with my distress crayon. So I'm just scribbling them on and then taking my, putting my finger in some water and then blending them out. And so the green is a uh, twisted citron and peeled paint. And then I'm kind of going over the, that yellow to make a sky now um, with, this is Mermaid Lagoon and Salty Ocean. And then that's Seedless Preserves. And this is Chip Sapphire that I'm gonna wind up using to create like a frame effect around what is becoming a little sort of scene, a very, very uh, impressionistic landscape, if you will. So now I'm gonna draw a hill with my Twisted Sister and Peeled Paint and blend that with my water, my touch with some or finger in water. And that's the Salty Ocean and the Mermaid Lagoon blended together to create a sky again. And you can see how I'm kind of creating these little landscapes. And now I want to make this more dirt. So I took antique linen and drew that on top, um, but it didn't really brown it down enough. So again, I'm adding the frame effect. And now I'm going to take my baby wipe and wipe off some of this distress crayon and add a little more blue. This is salty ocean to get the sky uh, less yellow and yes, less green and more blue. And now I'm going to add more twisted citron for more textural grass. And then here's more antique linen to get that look to look more like dirt. And so now I'm going to sort of place my little dog here to decide how is she going to be in this scene. So I'm going to create more grass, um, blend it a little bit with some water. And you can see how like that, that gesso in the background has kind of created some funky textural areas. And I really like that. Um, and now I'm going to take vintage photo to brown down this grass in the front part of this one to make it look more like dirt. And now I'm going to change the two around <laughs> and decide that the, the green one will be the middle panel and the brown one's going to be the, the dog with the hydrant. And I take pumice stone and gray it down because I'm now I'm thinking, oh, this maybe this is sidewalk for the hydrant and the little dog. So I'm going to take pumice stone and kind of gray that all down. And then I'm going to take my, my golden lab here and kind of draw around him with the distress crayon so I kind of know what I'm thinking for the scene on this one. So I've got a patch of dirt, which is my antique linen and my vintage photo there. And then that green will be grass around it, which is the twisted citron. And then salty ocean is making the sky and a little bit of mermaid lagoon there. And that, that was probably the best one because I planned it out a little bit. <laughs> And then there's the seedless preserves and the chip sapphire again to create that sort of framing effect. So now I've got my three little scenes that are going to create my triptych, if you will, sort of the base of, of the scenes. Um, and I'm just adding a little more color here and there. And now I'm going to stamp the little paw print stamps from that puppy stamp set in archival jet black ink around some of the edges of the frames to add another dog element, but also just another more interesting um, element rather than just the crayons and just the color. So this is kind of giving me a little bit of detail around the edges and I'm not being too particular in how I'm stamping this. Um, it's really more of an, uh, an effect than anything else. And I wanted to deep, deepen the color on the frame. So I grab my Distress Oxides and I'm just spreading this with my finger too. No water, just right on my finger and I'm just spreading it. This is picked raspberry and it's really pink. So I decided to change that up a little bit with some candied apple. So I'm covering up a fair amount of the picked raspberry with the candied apple just because the there's more red with the dogs than pink, obviously. And then this is some broken china and then I'll also add some salty ocean 
um, to darken down the skies and make them a little more uh, blue with the green grass. And you can see how all the different layers are really coming together to create this uh, sort of effect. Now this is some, well it's kind of a paint, it's from Art Anthology, it's called Imperial Sorbet. It's like a burgundy purple and it's super super glittery and kind of textural. So I'm just adding it around the edges here and there to add some glitter but also add some texture and, and make them a little bit darker. And it's another layer that's adding to sort of this very um, colorful effect that I've got going on, especially on the frames of these of these pictures. So this is chipped sapphire that I'm using just on the edges with a little bit of water um, just to darken down the outside edges. That seemed like a good idea to me and I was, was doing something cool and bringing out the really bright color of the interior scenes. So now I'm going to uh, put my dogs in place. So I'm taking some pumice stone and I'm adding shadow under like the dog and the hydrant so that they are not just floating in the scene but seem to be um, actually uh, positioned on the hill or on the sidewalk. And I'm taking gel medium and I'm adhering down my die cuts and then I'm going to coat the entire panel with the gel medium. Now the gel medium is going to seal the entire thing and make it uh, non-porous. So since distress crayons are water soluble as you saw with my finger in the water you need to be careful when you spread the gel medium that your brush is not wet before you start spreading it because if it's wet at all with water when you start spreading it that's going to mess up the distress crayons the distress crayons are going to react with the water and move around so don't do that start off with a dry brush and then adhere your pieces in place using the gel medium and it works just fine you might have a tiny bit of smearing, but I really didn't have too much problem at all because I started with that dry brush. And I have learned that the hard way, as I imagine you could guess. So now I'm going to put my little greeting in place, which is Get Your Happy On from the Elizabeth Craftstein's Fashionable Phrases stamp set. Um, that was kind of my theme in my head for this whole little dog triptych because... If you have dogs, you know they are so happy. They're like the happiest creatures. Like my dog probably experiences more joy in a day than I have in years of my life just because he's so cute and just so happy about the smallest little things. So that's kind of why I wanted to make this little cute puppy triptych because get your happy on just seemed like the perfect description for what these dogs are doing because you know one's taking a nap one's wants to play with the ball and then one's got a hydrant and that's all good so <laughs> how fun is that and but I digress so <laughs> I'm adding more sh shading with pumice stone and I'm going to seal this again with a uh, gel medium after I've after I've done this it's just like the shadows under the dogs weren't dark enough for me and now I'm going to stamp the greeting in archival jet black ink on top of the middle panel. So it'll say, get your happy on in the middle. And I thought that was really especially appropriate for the dog with the ball. Cause like how happy is your dog with a ball? <laughs> so, um, I did stamp that several times to get a good, good, uh, impression, I guess I would say. Now, I needed to add another element. I can't stop myself. So I'm, I grab my paw prints, hearts and paw prints stencil, and I'm spreading some modeling paste through certain of the paw prints um, of the stencil here and there around on the outer edges. And then I'm going to cover the modeling paste while it's still wet with copper glitter. And so I'm going to have some, br some glittery brown paw prints around the edges of my uh, frames. So I'm just kind of carefully setting down the stencil, trying to not hit anything that I've already got down on the, on the panel, obviously, to mess that up. And then trying to just carefully spread it through the openings that are touching the, the art panel. And then peeling it up carefully, like so. And I'll do that on all three. And then I'm gonna cover it with the glitter and then I'm going to set these aside to dry. And so it will, I think I waited at least an hour for the modeling paste to totally dry. 
um, with the glitter adhered to it. The modeling paste just, when it's wet, will automatically like work kind of as a glue for that glitter. So once it's dry, so now they're dry, I am wiping them off with my Swiffer cloth because that really does a great job of getting rid of any excess glitter that shouldn't be there. And to finish off the backs, I'm painting the backs with just some, you know, inexpensive black craft paint. And then I'm going to go around the edges just a little bit here and there to add like, a, um, you know, just kind of a messy painterly edge. Again, kind of reinforcing the dark edges that I already had going with some of the like distress, distress crayons. And finally, for my final happy element, I die cut some flowers using the large flower set and small flower set, both brand new die sets from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I die cut them out of white soft finish cardstock and then the red is from the Moda Scrap Simply Love paper pack and it has little hearts on it. It's pretty cute. Um, and so I'm going to just poke holes in the middle. So I'm going to uh, use a black brad to hold these together. So I'm feeding the brad through the holes in the flowers and then just spreading the back to keep the flowers together. And then I'm going to use Ranger Multimedia Matte on the back of the flower and the brad to um, hold the entire flower down to the little panel. And I don't know what it was about those flowers that I just, I just really liked them. And as you can see, they work perfectly together. Those die sets, like the large and the small fit right in, in together. And I just wanted those little extra happy flowers for my little happy dogs. <laughs> and now I'm going to just uh, stick the panels together. So I've got two pieces of black Gina K Designs uh, Black Onyx cardstock. And I've, they're an inch and a half wide by four and a quarter inches tall. And I've scored them at three and a quarter inches. So they're scored in half. And now I'm folding this one um, fold up. So I've, I'm pressing the one panel down to one side. And then I'm going to put 10 millimeter adhesive on the other side. And I'll press the front panel down to that. Um, so it's fold, they're folding away from each other, and then the fold is in between the two panels so that there's enough space so that it can fold easily, um, like back and forth. So, like so. And then I will trim off the excess to get like a nice smooth seam on the back. And then the other side is going to go, it's going to fold in. So, I've just put adhesive on one side, and I'll fold that around the uh, where they come together on both sides to get the adhesive in place and then just trim off the excess on that and that is the completed little hinges on the project and that, that cardstock is pretty heavy duty it's like 110 pound so um, I'm not too worried about it falling apart and it holds it together very nicely and you can fold it shut so the whole thing can collapse down to be four by four and you could mail it as a card if you wanted to or you spread it out and it's four by 12, a little bit less since it's kind of bending back and forth, um, just as a cute little decor piece. And I just thought it was so fun and cute and happy and reminds me of how happy dogs are and how much they appreciate the little things in life. So hopefully I've inspired you to grab some distressed crayons at least in those puppy stamp sets and try to make a fun dog themed card or mixed media piece. Here are two more mixed media pieces I've done in the past and as always supplies are linked in the video description and over on my blog. If you liked the video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Thanks so much. Have a great day.